Welcome to the first C1 booster session on CERDs. What I'd like to recall first is the following rule. This is going to be really very useful to us. What it's basically saying is that you can take the product there and you can individually square root A and individually square root B. That turns out to be very useful for these types of questions. We need to, of course, recall our square numbers. And we then think which of those square numbers will divide into 99. Now, 1 does, but that's not very useful. 4 doesn't, 99 is odd. But of course, 9 does. So we can now rewrite the number 99 as 9 times 11. And then what the rule here is saying is we can individually square root 9 and individually square root 11. So we can write this as 3 root 11. Now some people like to avoid that step entirely, go straight to that step. That's fine. I'm going to do that here for B. So we think what square number is going to there. Now I think we can see that 25 is going to go into there. So I can write this as root 25 times root 5. Just check there that 5 times 25 does equal 125. Of course it does. So now we can write this as 5 root 5. In fact, some people even like to avoid that step, which you can do. And I'm, I'll probably do that for part C. Now, looking at C, there's no immediate way to actually do this question. You simply can add and subtract different thirds. They do have to be the same. But maybe if we try and simplify all these three thirds down, we might be able to um, collect some terms at the end. We'll see. Now, root 28. So 4 goes into there. So what you could do is imagine the 4 coming out. As the 4 comes out, square root it. And then ask yourself, how many times did does 4 go into 28? Well, it goes in 7 times. So we get 2 root 7. We can see that 25 goes into 175. So imagine the 25 exiting there. But as the 25 leaves, just give it a square root. There we go. Then ask yourself, how many times does 25 go into 175? Well, it goes in 7 times. So that's 5 root 7. And then on the 63, we can see that 9 goes in. So imagine 9 leaving. But when it leaves, give it a good square root. So it becomes 3. And then 9 goes into 63 seven times. So I've really skipped quite a few steps there. Um, but if you're confident, and perhaps, perhaps you can do that, it will save you some time in the exam. Now, by chance, we have lots of root 7s here. So we can collect them together. So we've got 2, 5, so 7, minus 3, so 4, root 7. And that's as uh, simple as we can write that. Let's move on to uh, another example, expanding brackets. Just one thing I want you to bear in mind is this rule here. Perhaps it's best to explain by considering this number n. And if you were to square root that, that's fine. But then if you came along and squared that, it's basically opposite operation. So you go back to a normal n. So in other words, if you've got two numbers like this, well, the same number, and you've got root n times root n, you, of course, go back to a normal n. So let's bear that in mind. Uh, be systematic, please. Let's just start with a 5. 5 times 1. Easy enough. Okay, let's keep the discipline. 5 whoops, of 2 root 7 is, well, 10 root 7. Now let's move on to this second term here. Root 7 times 1 is, well, a single root 7. But perhaps the hardest one is here. What we have is a 2 times a root 7 times a further root 7. But of course, when you have a root 7 times root 7, you go back to a normal 7. That's the main thing there. So when looking at this, 2 root 7 times root 7, we basically end up with 2 times 7, so 14. Now let's collect up here. We've got 19 and we've got 11 root 7. Let's look at B. 
Um, I wouldn't particularly advise you doing this in your head. I would write the bracket out as a repeated bracket like this. It doesn't take long and I think it allows you to maintain more accuracy. So here we go. 7 times 7, 49. But then we've got a root 7 times a root 7 as well, which just goes to a normal 7. So that's 49 times 7, which is well quite difficult. Perhaps we could do 50 times 7. 50 times 7 is 350. And then take 7 back. Next, we have 7 root 7 times 2. So that's 14 root 7. I should check the sign, they were different, so a minus is fine. Next we've got two lots of uh, 7 root 7, so it's another 14 root 7. The signs are different, so I'm going to commit to a negative. And then finally we've got 2 times 2. Let's think about the signs though, they are both the same, so we're going to go for a positive. Sign errors are possibly the biggest source of errors with questions like this. Do verify, do be careful. 3, 4, 3, add to 4, we're on 3, 4, 7, and we can collect these up as minus 28 root 7. Let's look at C. So there are lots of thirds here, but if you've got a root 13 times another root 13, it of course goes back to a normal 13. Next we have 2 root 3 times root 13. Perhaps it's best if I just go back a page to the rule here. And what we've got is root 3 times root 13. And you can see that we can just times the 3 and 13 together and put it under its own square root bracket as root 39. Um, now there's no other simple way, there's no square numbers really involved here. 3 times 39... Uh, 3 times 13 is 39, you're not going to get a square number going into that. So we're not going to be able to simplify it out any further. So we would just write that as 2 root 39. You're not going to get a square number into that. We know that because the prime factor decomposition of 39 is 3 times 13. There's going to be no square number. Uh, next, we look here. Again, we've got root 3 times root 13, so we can just write that as a root 39. Then think about the signs, they are different, so there we go. And finally, we have this term here. We have 2 root 3 times a third of root 3, so a root 3 and a root 3 is, well, 3. So 3 times 2 is 6. So let's commit to the 6. Let's think now about the sign, and that's a minus. Note that I'm often thinking about the sign separately. That's to avoid any errors. So here we've got 7 plus root 39. Again, no square number goes into here, so we know um, it's not going to simplify down further. The other thing you might be asked to do is to rationalize the denominator of a fraction. Um, mathematicians don't particularly like thirds, uh, irrational terms on the denominator. Uh, if they can help it, they prefer them to be on the numerator. So what we can do here is times by root 7. Well, well we can't do that because uh, the fraction's changed, but if we times the top by root 7 as well, then we've not really changed anything. We're just times this fraction by 1, so we're allowed to do that. And that's quite nice because on the top we've got 21 root 7. And on the bottom we've got root 7 times root 7, which of course goes back to a normal 7. And if you've got 21 root 7 and you divide it by 7, then it simplifies down, of course, to 3 root 7. Um, next much harder. Um, I'd like you to recall this algebraic form. We call it a difference of two squares. The thing to note is you've basically got the same thing, an x and a y, an x and a y, but it's just the signs that are different. When you've got that algebraic structure, um, 
we end up with it being equivalent to x squared minus y squared. Let's just look at this over here. We've got some thirds here, same sort of thing. A root a and a root b, which just the signs that are different. So we've got thirds everywhere. But crucially, when we expand this out, we just get something that's very rational, a minus b. So we're really taking advantage of this of algebraic structure of the difference of two squares. And what we're going to do here is times, let's put that in brackets there, um, we've got root 6. We're going to times by root 6 minus 10. And that should mean that when we times these two together on the bottom, that we just end up with something that's really quite rational, not a third in, in, um, in, in sight. But of course, we're not allowed to just times by that unless we times the top by the exact same thing. And I'm just timesing the whole thing by 1, which, which is permitted. So times in the top there, we've got 2, root 6, and we've got 2 times minus 10, so minus 20. And on the bottom, we've got a root 6 times a root 6, which is just 6. And if you look here, we have root 6 times minus 10, but then here we've got 10 times root 6. So those two things cancel out. And then finally, we've got 10 times 10, 100, and that's a minus because the signs were different. So just simplifying the bottom here, we've got minus 94. I really don't like that being a minus, so we can times the top by minus 1. And the bottom by minus 1. What you'll notice there, uh, so just times the top and bottom by minus 1, is every single sign changes. And again, you're allowed to do that because of equivalent fractions. Um, another thing to observe is you can cancel. Um, 2 goes into the top, goes into this bit uh, 10 times, and then we get a 1. And we can only do that if we divide the bottom by 2 as well. So there we get uh, well 45 out of 2, so 47. So in its simplest form, we've got 10 minus root 6 there over 47. I think I've just got one other example. Here it is. And here we're just going to take 2 root 5, take the 7. The only difference is we're going to have that as a positive there. And we're going to do the same to the top because, well, we have to. Otherwise, we're just changing things. We've got to times by 1, no other number. So on the top, we have 2 root 5 times a root 5. So 2 root 5 is 5. We've got 2 times 5, which is 10. And then we've got, well, let's be careful here. I'm going to put these in brackets. Um, Let's slow down and do this properly. So we've got a 7 root 5 there. 7 root 5. And now we can move on to this term. So we've got 2 root 5 times 3. So we've got 6 root 5. Let's think about the sign. Different, so I'm going to put it to a negative. And we've got 3 times 7. And the signs are different. So negative. Okay, let's do this properly. So here we have a root 5 times root 5, which is just a 5, and a 2 times 2, which is 4. So we've got 4 times 5, so 20. And, sorry, wrong pen. Apologies. So we've got 20 there. And then what we'll have is there we get a 14 root 5, but then we get a minus 14 root 5, so they will cancel. I won't mention them further. And then we've got 7 times 7, 49, and that's a minus. So let's just tidy this up. On the top, we have 10 less 21, that land us on the number negative 11. And we have just a normal root 5. And then we've got 20 take away 49. Um, so that lands us on negative 29. And again, we can times the top by minus 1 and the bottom by minus 1.